Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today for our Facebook Live. My name is Gabby, and I am here with Dr. Lyndon Fornoff, who is a pediatric neurosurgeon at Boys Town National Research Hospital. And I'm also here with Jen Diaz, who is a registered nurse practitioner at our craniofacial clinic. So, ladies, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing? We're doing great. Thanks for having us. It's such a treat to do this with you. <laughs> yes, of course. Well, July is um, Cranial Facial Awareness Month, so it is a treat for us as viewers all watching you we'll kind of discuss a little bit more about the different types of cranial facial animales and how to care for children with those conditions. So for everybody watching, if you have questions for us as we go through our discussion, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. So let's begin. So for those who may be unfamiliar, what is a craniofacial anomaly? So um, craniofacial abnormalities, anomalies are um, kind of run the gamut of severity. So we can think about it as an abnormal pattern of how the face and the skull were made. Um, or it can be based on bones, based on skin, it can be skin lesions. So it's just anything that's kind of straying off the, um, what we consider normal developmental path. Okay, and so what can cause them? Um, they can be congenital, meaning that it's based, it has to do with some abnormality in how the babe was formed in the uterus. Um, but you can have craniofacial abnormalities because of genetic disorders as well. You can have them because of trauma, being in an accident and having um, a facial or lip injury or skull injury. So there's a kind of a wide range of why these patients end up in our two clinics. What are some what? common types or maybe the most common types that Boys Town specifically works with? So we'll kind of hit on two separate um, craniofacial clinics. Um, the one I'll talk about is the complex craniofacial clinic, and that has to deal with skull abnormalities. So that's with us as neurosurgeons, um, the plastic surgeons, the geneticists. Um, we all meet together on the fourth Tuesday of the month in the afternoon to go over um, patients with um, abnormally shaped heads. Um, sometimes that corresponds with abnormally shaped eyes and kind of mid face, so nose issues as well. And so that clinic um, is in the afternoon. And so we call that complex. Um, and so dealing with sagittal or craniosynostosis, so abnormal um, closure of the skull sutures or the skull plates that kind of allow the brain to grow normally. Um, and we also deal with something called positional plagiocephaly, which is that all the sutures are normal. It's just that the skull is misshapen because the babe has um, weakened neck muscles on one side or they're, they're a little bit delayed in tummy time and lifting their heads up. And so we deal with that as well. And then Jen will talk about the other craniofacial clinic. Yes. Yeah, so the other clinic is our cleft lip and palate clinic. And I would say the cleft lip and palate um, um, area, it's that's probably one of the most common um, anomalies, okay? Um, we do have that clinic here every Tuesday. Um, it involves a multitude of other discipline members, okay, uh, within our team. Um, so there's different variations. So besides the cleft flip and palate, there's also other diagnoses such as hemifacial microsomia, which is basically underdeveloped um, side of the face. You have microtia atresia, which is um, an ear abnormality as well. I mean, like I said, there's so many that we can probably name, but those are the most common ones that we, we tend to deal with in our clinic. Um, like um, vascular malformations of the face or hemangiomas oh, yeah. of the face and skull. And so those, like we said, it kind of deals with skin issues, bone issues, cartilage issues, kind of everything um, that you could want to deal with up here. So we really deal with it all, is what I'm hearing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. At either clinic, we, we can care for you at either place. So that's great to know. OK, so what kind of specialized care, then, going a little bit more micro, does Boys Town offer for children living with these craniofacial conditions? 
You want to start off with? Yeah, so like I said, it's a multidisciplinary team approach, okay? Um, and it's for bo both clinics, mm -hmm. but just slightly different. Um, in the cleft lip and palate clinic, we have our audiologists, okay? We have ear, nose, and throat doctors. We have pediatricians, geneticists, speech language pathologists. We have our plastic surgeon, oral surgeon, orthodontist, and social work. And then we also, I like to include our nurse coordinators because they deal, they deal with a lot of the, the back end stuff and preparing for clinic, retrieving images and any information that we need on patients. Then with regards to the complex clinic, mm -hmm. we have um, the plastic surgeon, Dr. Fornoff, the neurosurgeon, and we also have another neurosurgeon as well. Um, and then we have another, a geneticist. So it's a smaller, smaller team, but just enough for what we need to um, make sure that these kids are taken care of. The, the appointments can be a little bit on the longer side, but you really, as a caregiver for um, these patients, it, it, it's really kind of hitting all of these points at one time. So you don't have to take more time off of work or sure, take kids yeah. out of school, daycare, that type of thing. So while the appointments can be a little bit exhausting, it's nice to have everyone um, there seeing the patient on the same day and then coming up with a care plan that all of these different providers are comfortable with and that the caregivers are comfortable with for their little little babes. Yeah. I guess that too, um, within the cleft lip and palate clinic, we meet after our morning clinic. We meet for a good hour. We discuss every patient. So each discipline will take their turn and talk about their recommendations. And we just kind of, we just work together as a team and mm -hmm. figure out what's best at that moment in time. So that, it's very helpful for parents and they receive a formal letter, I guess in both clinics, they mm -hmm. receive a formal letter and um, just showing our recommendations based on their visit. Yeah, that's great to know because that was going to be my next question is how does this multidisciplinary team kind of work together? I'm sure it varies from patient to patient and by condition, but, you know, how do you guys develop these plans together to care for the holistic child? Yeah, so um, in the complex craniofacial clinic, we really work hand in hand because we don't do neurosurgery doesn't do surgeries without the plastic surgeon surgery side of things and so we all really be on the same page as in regards to safety for the patient timing of surgery anything else that needs to be done before the surgery takes place because some of these um craniofacial anomalies abnormalities have, have consequences in other areas of the body. So we need to make sure that the lungs are working well, that the heart's working well, kidneys are working well, if that can be associated with these anomalies. And so really having multiple people looking at the same patient kind of through different lenses really helps us ch check off all of these boxes mm -hmm. to make sure that we're doing the correct thing for the correct patient at the correct time. So I think it's super helpful. It, it, it's really nice that we all kind of get along and have yes. the same philosophy yes. for care. So we're, we're very rarely, are, is there a disagreement, but it's nice just to have everyone kind of on the same page so that we're not missing anything. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So talking a little bit, you know, on the cleft lip and palate side, what kind of care goes into the, into the patient after maybe the surgery. So I know commonly ENT will be involved or speech language pathologists. Jen, could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so I guess it depends on what type of surgery is being done. Yeah. Um, so for instance, with ENT, you know, it's common for them to place tubes um, in these kiddos that have the cleft palates. Just based on their anatomy, um, these kiddos are just more prone to ear infection. So they will see us back in clinic just to get an ear check another hearing test just to make sure that everything looks good. Um, with regards to speech and language, we there's a specific surgery that we do to correct um, what's called VPI, which is velopharyngeal insufficiency. Um, these kiddos sound nasally when they talk, and the plastic surgeon will go ahead and, and correct that, and we'll have follow-up appointments with regards to that, usually immediately post-op and then three months later just to reassess their um, speech. Um, and then the plastic surgeon, there's a variety, <laughs> I, there's a variety of, um, procedures, but like I said, with the cleft lip and palate being the most common, those are the ones that we see, um, we 
monitor, make sure the lip is healing well cosmetically, the palate is doing well and functioning well with um, respect to, you know, speech and development. Um, trying to think. You guys do a lot with, with the cleft lip and palate babes when, you know, newborns with yeah. um, training how to feed properly and um, assisted yes. devices for yes. feeding. Yes. Um, actually, our nurse does a really good job. Um, Cindy's a really great resource. Sometimes these kiddos after being born, sometimes there are specialty bottles that don't work for them. Parents kind of freak out. We'll call like my baby's not eating, I'm not getting sleep. Um, we always just say, hey, just call our office. And um, Cindy does a good job educating and saying, you know what, maybe try this bottle mm -hmm. um, and so forth. Sometimes we'll send bottles, like we'll see what we have for inventory and we're like, give us your address, yeah. we'll send we'll to you. Um, so we, yeah, we deal, we deal a lot of that aspect as well. Even like pre-surgical. Yes. So. Yeah, very nice. Well, that's kind of similar to a question that we had left in our comment section. So somebody asks, do you start seeing patients during their pregnancy or are there some cranial facial conditions that aren't apparent until after birth? Yeah, so typically um, we do have a prenatal visits. Usually the lip is identified during your um, prenatal ultrasound, okay? Usually at 18 to 24 weeks, all right? Um, Sometimes through that ultrasound, they say, oh, your baby might have a palate also, but usually it's hard to tell, you know, through the ultrasound to see if there's a cleft palate. But whenever there's a lip, they get referred to us from their PCP, and we just kind of talk to them and introduce how our team works, okay? Um, there's the best way to identify the cleft lip and palate is literally once the baby's born, so at the actual physical um, but it's nice that they come in because you establish that relationship, you know, from the beginning. So then once their baby's born, you, I, I love babies, so I get super <laughs> excited. I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> so yeah, it's just nice building that relationship early on. Um, and you know, there's so many questions and it's just a big shock every time they hear about this, especially their first time. So, um, yeah, we, we take care of them in that aspect. Okay. That's great. And that's really comforting to know, you know, for moms who are watching who may have had a child with a cliff open palate or maybe just are now facing that diagnosis that Boys Town is here for you and will be with you every step of the way. So that's great. Yeah, and it is nice that that clinic is weekly. Yes. You know, yes. so if something, if something it's a surprise, you know, when the babe is born that they can get in right away. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, that's great to know. So we did have another comment that was just left. And this question says, when is VPI discovered in a child? Our L uh, has a, sorry. it's all right. She's providing a little context here. Our LO has a cleft palate surgery coming up this fall. Is VPI something that is diagnosed when born or is this something the doctor cannot see until fixing the palate? Um, so VPI is something that we monitor like in toddler years, okay? So not everyone develops VPI. So kind of going back, so let's say your child has both the cleft lip and palate. We repair the lip usually at three months of age, and then we repair the palate roughly around nine months of age. And the reason for that is right, you know, it's close to one year when they start talking more, so it's important to make sure that that palate is repaired. Um, sometimes kiddos just do well with just speech therapy alone. Okay. So it's important. And we always reiterate this with our families that whenever we recommend that you come see us every year, which is what is typical, um, we really monitor for speech and we look anatomically to see if there is, um, VPI. So it's not diagnosed at birth. Okay. So it just, it, it takes time, but it's not, it's not everyone. Perfect. Okay, we have about two more questions for everyone watching. So if you have a comment, please leave it now so I can make sure to get it answered. Otherwise, we're happy to follow up after the live too. Okay, so what do you want parents to know? It can be anything related to the topic during National Cleft and Craniofacial Awareness Month. I think that... Um when you have a child that's diagnosed with something, whether it be craniosynostosis, cleft lip or palate, or any other 
um, craniofacial abnormality, it can feel like you're all alone in this journey. And so, especially with COVID and support systems kind of shrink and, and it can be very stressful, we are here for you. We're here to help you. We're here to walk you through everything, which is really nice where we have some prenatal visits so we can kind of set things up with how the cadence of events are gonna go. There's, you know, outreach. There's a whole bunch of information we can help the caregivers, parents, the other family members really to feel like they're not going through this alone because it is stressful. Everyone, you know, deals with these things a little bit different. And like we said, there's, there's, you know, it goes from pretty normal appearing to very severe end of the spectrum. And so we just want you to know that everything that we're doing in both of these clinics is to treat your child in the best way that we know how and to make sure that we're doing everything kind of for the whole of the child so that we're not missing out on certain things. Yeah, I um, I definitely agree. We I feel we work we all work so well. We all have the same passion, you know, to care mm -hmm. to care for this population, and we enjoy it. So just trust us. Come to us. See us. We have an amazing team. Um, I'd like to also add that you know, Boys Town, our craniofacial clinic is the only accredited facial clinic in the state of Nebraska. So. So that has, you know, that mean that should mean a lot. <laughs> it definitely does. Yes. Yes, that's great. So keep that in mind, everyone. You know where to go because we are the accredited one. So how can parents get in contact with you both if they would like to learn more or request an appointment? Yeah, you just call our number, our clinic, uh, the craniofacial clinic number. Um, area code is 531-355-6629. Great, and I will make sure to leave that in the comment section too, so you don't have to remember it. <laughs> yeah, and there can be referrals. I mean, self-refer mm -hmm. or your pediatrician or primary care doc or some other specialist who's seeing um, the child can refer on to us too. So it's pretty pretty simple mm -hmm. process. Just give us a call and it's easily searchable as well if you lose track of the number. Sure. Um, but yeah, our cl clinic coordinators are wonderful people. They'll ask you some questions, make sure that we have all of the um, information that we need, imaging if, it's a, if it was gotten beforehand, if we need it, but that's not a prerequisite or anything to, to have imaging before coming to our clinics. Well, thank you ladies so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you answering all of these questions. And for those of you watching, thank you. If, Like I said, if you have follow-up questions, feel free to comment or message our page and I can get you in touch with Dr. Fornoff or Jen. And have a great rest of your day. Awesome. Thank you thank so you. much. Bye.